Welcome to We Watch Too Much TV, the weekly podcast where two real-life best friends dish on all the TV content they've been binging in their remote work-based lives. Battling about everything from scripted television to reality TV and film, these two besties will immerse you in their quirky universe of streaming. Here are your hosts, Jerosalyn and Tanea. Jane, 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 Jane. That was the first song. I, I, I don't know why, but I'm here for it. You, Aretha does no wrong in my house, so. Yes. Hey. You know why? I just saw your beautiful post with Jennifer Hudson, and she played Aretha, so it just bought Chain of Fools in my head. Yes, yes. I was at Jennifer Hudson's show last week, and the guest was the Mariah Carey. Like, what? <laughs> the queen of Christmas. I will say I'm already tired of all I want for Christmas is you. I'm sorry, guys. I we know it's Thanksgiving. To her, and it was just so sweet because she like, you you know, she loved it. She didn't perform, but she at least did. She said like, it's to, you know, her little Christmas thing. And she did her little, like she really could hit that she note. Hit the like, note. It's just her. Yeah. It's just her voice. Like naturally just goes up there the way if somebody is like, like hers is really like, a, <laughs> like it's up there. It's- no, no, we're not no. going to do that to our yeah, listeners and viewers. No. Yeah, no, we're going to... But listen, y'all, it's our first video episode of season three. As you can see, we are human. We exist. We did our makeup. We don't have on sweatpants. We look presentable. Yes, yes. <laughs> so we are happy to be here so you can see our smiling faces because we do be smiling all through the show. Yes. And more than likely, you can't tell through the audio recording. Because it sounds like we're ripping people a new asshole. And sometimes we are. Um, and we will Happy today. holidays. Thanksgiving week. What are you going to do for Thanksgiving? What are you cooking? Uh, oh, small dinner. Small dinner. Just with, you know, with the husband. Um, just what, just the, the things that we like. So our sweet potato souffle, which I'm still trying to get the brown spam to get <laughs> onto that. But I at least got to give y'all the recipe because Mama Gail was like, wait. What you a mean? souffle. We make it's souffle potato pie, but her souffle is actually yes, really good. Yes. But I am trying to transition the Black community away from candy yams to the sweet potato souffle. And there is a growing population of the Black community that we are transitioning to the souffle because I'm telling you, once you go to the souffle, there's no going back. Like, Yeah. It's very it's- thick. <laughs> no, it's light. Candy yams is too thick. The no, sweet- that's what I mean. I like the fluffiness of the yeah. thick. I like that t- type of thickness, the whipped cream yeah. of it, not yeah, the yeah, actual with the, yam with itself. The crushed, with the crushed pecans on top. Oh, so we'll do that. We'll Mark will do his mac and cheese. I do amazing maple syrup, Brussels sprouts. Um, and I'm thinking instead of turkey this year, uh, smothered chicken and gravy. Sorry, that is my puppy. He is also <laughs> making an appearance at our <laughs> show. <laughs> And tell us his name. Uh, so everyone, you guys can meet Nino Luther Brown. Um, he is the official mascot of our podcast. Um, he will get his own promo. Oh. Oh, <laughs> Say hello. Nima. You are the name already. You are so cute. Say thank you. I keep your that Because when, when I sit when I said his name, he looks right at the computer screen. He knows this little Nino Brown. Um he's 2.9 pounds. I love that. He's such a cute dog. I he's love three months and a terror. So everyone I, well, yeah, he has a lot of energy, but it, he'll calm down. Yes. So he will be biting me or yeah. You may or may not hear him. Sometimes he wants well, to be he, really yeah, quiet. I haven't, I haven't heard him. She's had him for a couple of weeks now. And, you know, we've been doing the shows. I haven't heard him. Okay. He, Look, see, see, he's like, mommy, leave me alone. Okay. You could okay. go, ow, ow, see. Okay. Well, we're going to let him down. Well, we're going to finish the show. You no Brown. Okay. <laughs> you, he, he's only following his namesake. Okay, if you don't know who Nino Brown is, you need to know today, <laughs> but that is his son. So are you and Nino going to the Brown Spam's house? Yes, same okay. thing every year. We go to my grandma's house. I'll be cooking lasagna, salmon. I'm trying to find a healthy dessert. I used to do banana pudding. But I'm try- I know I'm trying to get my family out of so much sugar and salt and fat. So this week, I'm like, this weekend, I'm trying some things. I've been looking at on Pinterest that taste. Like they're heavy in sugar, but not. 
I just want to change the trajectory of like sugar in my family. We love cake. Yes. We love cupcakes. So I'm really trying to like the holidays do a vegan. All of my, I, that shit goes out the door. I'm <laughs> eating my banana pudding. Okay. I want to try like a vegan cake. So I have a lot of stuff. I, I know, I know, I know. But I have a lot of stuff I bought. I just want to challenge people's minds. Yeah, I know. You know what? It so was, I'm going to try. No, right. I, I think it, it because there's amazing vegan desserts. And it's really, to me, it's about just how you're making it, preparing it, and the love you put into it. And I think you'll do it. I think you'll do so, it. So, fingers I'm crossed. I'm for you to try to convert <laughs> the Browns fam to a vegan uh, holiday dessert. We'll see how that goes. You really try it. Okay. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, we'll be back after this episode. We will be back after the Thanksgiving break. And we just want everyone to enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. Yes, we won't be doing audio after that. I might have gained 10 pounds if this vegan thing doesn't work out and I eat all the banana pudding and yams or souffle. Yeah, yeah. But on that <laughs> note, let's get into our weekly grab. ASMR style. Okay. <laughs> what you got first on your list, best friend? So first is we know I love the challenge. It is back on MTV, first of all. I don't like the CBS thing. Yeah. Like, no. can we just keep it to MTV Paramount? We don't need CBS. Yeah, keep it so, to where it belongs. Who yeah, because yeah, MTV. That's where it is. So we have a new challenge regular season as opposed to the USA, which was on CBS. But this one is battle for a new champion. So nobody's a rookie, but nobody has won. So they have all 30 contestants that started out. And the first couple of episodes, they all play together. Ah. This season is different because there's only one winner. There's not one man and one woman. There's one winner. And they all, that person wins a big pot. Right now, the pot is like $350,000. They have different levels to play. So right now, they're in the chaos stage. So everybody's playing as, as one team. They have a level of things to do. And then at the end, they vote in one person. That person goes home. What I love about this format is that one, there's only one winner. Two, that it's somebody that hasn't won. But what they introduced in this week is the mercenary stage. So now the person who's in the bottom, they have to go against a champion. And every champion they have has won at least five eliminations, at least seven times. So they brought back CT. They brought back Car Maria, who hasn't been on a challenge in a long time. They bought back Laurel. They bought back Tori. They bought back Devin. They bought back some heavy hitters for these people who think they're going to win. You can't win without Who's beating them the first. Show? You didn't tell us. So some good people are from Big T, who was on before. Yes. Berna, who was on last season, who's yes. kind of really getting a bad rap. Her and CT were like buddy buddies. Um, It was her first season. Right, right. Kylan from Big Brother. A lot of... um challengers who are overseas so like zara from uk you have james from uk huey from uk not too many rookies from america that you haven't known horacio and olivia are back those are like my two that i really want to win narice is back and narice and horacio are actually in a very loving relationship and you kind of see the beginning of it Horacio was like, I don't want to fall in love. I'm good. And then you watch him and Arise fall in love over the season. So it's amazing. Um, Michelle and her messy behind is back. I feel like Michelle and Jay bring that survivor-ish to the challenge. Yeah. They mean? all have the allies. They're already in all the tea and they're fighting each other. Raven, who was on last season with her ex, I forgot his name, but he was really handsome. She didn't make it that far because she didn't have a head in the game. Mm -hmm. And some people still haven't learned how to play this game. Yeah. Chauncey, who was Amber's uh, boyfriend slash baby daddy. I remember he him. Home. Oh, they had um, a baby. Yes, a little girl named Sunny. Oh, so cute. So he yeah. was there, like, I'm fighting for my daughter. And so he, he went, went home. <laughs> And I take it he was like the first one to go home. Yes. And then the the, the thing that stuck out about this episode is so he was like, at least your baby mama won. So he was asking everybody, have I done you wrong? And they were like, yes. Have I done you wrong, Chauncey? You have. You voted for me. Have I done you wrong? And they were like, yeah, you have. So it's just a really good show. One, because it's going to be a new winner. But two, they're 
now getting into the nitty gritty of alliances and fighting. So I'm here for it. I'm happy it's back on MTV. And I can't wait to this week because that's when they're going to start bringing out the actual heavy hitters, the former winners. Okay, well, it sounds like I have a good amount to catch up on, um, which is good because I've been like binging a lot of TV and I'm like, I could use another one. So I'll go ahead and start the challenge because I had forgot that it started. I did see the trailer for it and I was like, oh, I'm gonna watch this. And I totally- Yeah, and it's only three or four episodes in. So you can do a quick day catch up. Mm-hmm. What's on uh, your- uh, So first on mine is Selling Sunset season seven. It is just the best passive watch, you know, which is why I've made it, you know, up to season seven. I've been watching Selling Sunset since the first season. And um, I love that show Um, because every time a new one comes out, I'll look at the trailer and I'm like, I'm over it. I'm not watching it. And then I'll just at least watch the first episode. And then before you know it, I done binge the whole season because, you know, there are only 30 minute episodes. And this season actually is one of the better ones. It's filled with all types of my kind of petty. I love it. Like it's, <laughs> you know, so first of all, we, you know, they are known for their fashion. Like their fashion is just top tier. Um, but the top fashion queen is Chelsea and she is the black Barbie queen. Like she is just serving looks on looks on looks. And on top of that, she is the top seller of the firm of the Oppenheim group. And to be like, not only is she black, but she's African, like she's African root, black and just crushing the game on that show. Um, she, you know, she's really good at like kind of playing a villain, but in like a fun, still likable way, unlike, you know, like Christine or the predecessor villain. Um, so I stand her, I stand Chelsea, but what I, I, I ultimately wanted to shout out. Oh, I also want to shout out, uh, Chriselle, like just, you know, just seeing her growth since she came in the show, like what season two, um, you know, her, we, we, you know, we saw her go through the divorce with the, this is us guy and Justin you know, Hartley. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, don't <laughs> screw him. He's an asshole. Um, uh, date around. She dated the guy from, uh, dancing with the stars. Then she dated Jason a little bit, Jason Oppenheim. And now she really found love with G, um, her partner and they got married and oh. they're talking about adoption. And it's just really to just see her living her truth. And then at the same time, she's not taking no bullshit. Like, and the thing is when you come for Chriselle, she's going to come back. And when she comes back, you're not ready for her shade. Like Chriselle throws shade and it's like, you're not expecting this from her because she's so sweet, but I'm here for it. Um, but ultimately my major shout out wants to go to Mary and um, Romaine, her husband. You know, we've saw, seen them, their love story. They, they kicked off season one, getting married despite their like 20 year age gap. Like Romaine is really for Mary. Um, and, you know, he was definitely wanting to have children. And at first she was like closed off to it, but she finally opened up to having children and they were like doing the IBF. And so you see the, se the season start where they get good news that they're expecting a, expecting a child. Um, but at the same time, I'm like looking at her confessionals and I'm, you know, I'm not seeing a baby bump. So by the time you get to episode six, the end of episode six, going into episode seven, they get the news that it's a, it's a miscarriage. And, um, I completely related to what she was going through because I went through it a year ago and you're exactly how it happened to her is what happened to me. And it what happens to a whole lot, a, a lot of women. And, um, you know, you go in for what you think is going to be that first appointment for a sonogram and it's not, and it's heartbreaking. Like it's literally heartbreaking. Everybody kind of deals with it and heals in their own way. Um, for me, like even just seeing how she was sharing the news so soon with people, I didn't do that. Be I, I wasn't expecting to have a miscarriage, but at the same time, I just knew not to tell people so soon. Um, and then, you know, as you're going at, you know, kind of coming out of that in the event, if you do get pregnant again, it's just like your, your anxiety is just at a different level because you already know what the disappointment looks like and what it could look like. And so you're just hoping and praying that it doesn't happen again. So I just want to, you know, my hat goes off to her and Romaine for really sharing that story on the show and helping to shed light on something that's so many, so many couples, because it's not just something that the woman goes through, the 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 husband, the spouse is going through that with you, um, go through. And um, it just adds to how well-rounded this season was. Because you're getting the petty, you're getting the shade, you're getting the feuds. Um, you're seeing a non-binary marriage. 
Mm -hmm. And you're seeing a couple with a huge age gap go through a miscarriage. It's just like, it's really good. Like I, I yes. love this season. 12 episodes of, of good reality television. She's selling well, something. shout out to Mary. Shout out to all the women out there. We are praying for you all. But I do want to say, I did see a viral clip of Chriselle and Jason's new girlfriend. And they were talking about how she wants to be her friend. And she oh. was like, you don't even know me. And then she misgendered G. And then yes. Chriselle was like, my partner's pronouns are they and them. We're yes. not friends. That was funny. Yeah, that was first funny. of all, Jason's little young ass girlfriend, she she sounds so stupid all throughout the season. She didn't make absolutely no sense. No I don't sense. think producers were putting her up to it, but she just, she delivered horribly. She's like, well, I just like, I want to be your friend. And I just feel like, girl, she wants to be with your man. And yeah. you can see it clear as day when there's scenes of them together. Jason still had very deep feelings for Chrishell. They mm, only she's broke up beautiful. Chrishell is broke beautiful. Up because he didn't want to have kids. So it's not like he didn't have feelings for her. So why would you even want to be friends? Like, it's very weird. It's given weird. But like, she was annoying. But honestly, the number one most annoying person, honestly, in my opinion, is Nick Cannon's eighth baby mama, Brie Tizzy. She looks very annoying. She Filling can't. herself way too much. Not make, like, she ignited this feud with this girl that she, she act like the girl was like stalking her, her rat, like, I, she's like, I don't know her. I don't know her. Only to find out on social media, girl, you left comments under this girl's pictures. Two years ago. <laughs> Why are you now trying to act brand new? And you just making yourself look stupid. Then goes to Jason like, I don't understand why I'm not getting the $10 million listings and he's giving it to Chelsea. Um, Because Chelsea sells houses. You've been here. This is now your second season, girl. You ain't sold one house. She's like, all you sell is Nick Cannon, your baby daddy. That's the only thing you, you talk about. That's the like only thing. Like, nice baby mama. Like, we don't even really know you, girl. So I like, but it still, <laughs> it, it helps. It, it, it adds to it adds to the show. It helps the show because it's like, you know, I, I, you know, I love a good villain. She's a good villain. Yes. So, yeah. <laughs> so just watch it. Sell it, sell it, sell it. What's next on your From list? their number one fan. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So speaking of the pettiness and the drama, Real Housewives of Miami is back. Um, we love that it's back on Bravo and not on Peacock. I felt yeah. like they were definitely playing games. That's where it deserves to be. Um, it's just given what it needs to give. I don't want to go into too much of it because we're here some about it, some things about it later. First thing I want to bring up is I love Julia. That is my spirit animal. I feel like I'm going to be like a 60 year old, like gay woman with the kids and like my oh. partner with a goat and a dog. Like, I feel like I'm going to be her, but black. Um, I love how she's just authentically becoming more herself every season. I love how she shows up for people. Um, Alexia, I'm going to root for you and Todd. It's yeah, just a big yeah. red flag. There's some red flags, mama. Now, I do think Adriana was wrong. Basically, what happened was Adriana was spreading rumors about basically interaction she had with Todd. I don't know how true it was. I don't like that. But I do think that there's something going on. Yeah. You knew how important this thing was to your wife. You could have showed up, stayed with the guys, drunk your drink, and it couldn't have been that contentious. The fact that you came... As everybody is seeing you leave, you could have just been gone the whole day. Maybe you were sick. Maybe it was something with your kids. But for people to see you show up after the fact, I just, I hate the way that some husbands like him or Juan, they don't really think about what am I making my spouse look like? This is a national platform and I've decided to be with this person who has this platform. Do I want to embarrass them? Do I want to make people question how I feel about them? Because right. it took him nothing. The same way he could have sat into that dumb old apology on Instagram. Long ass apology, right. He could have showed up. Hey, y'all, I'm not feeling too well. I just want to say hi. You could have just played the part. So I'm just tired of these women dating people who are not willing to play the part, knowing that they're gaining the fame from it. They're gaining the notoriety from being on these shows, but they don't want to respect their women and pay, play the part. That was my thing. And finally, um... I love Marisol. I wish she had more of a storyline to be a main housewife, but then I also think... She is what I need in like Atlanta and like what I wish Sharice was for Potomac. She's a really good friend of. I wish she had more of a storyline to be more main, but I just love Marisol. I love watching her on TV. I love watching how drunk she gets. I love that she doesn't drink water. And I love that she has a little gay brunch with her boys. So I'm very excited for this season. I'm also praying for my Gertie. We know she's cancer free, but just watching that journey and yeah. watching her deal with this, with, you just don't know what people are going through. Yeah. So it just shows that you always have to be empathetic because the strongest people usually are fighting like the hardest war. So I can't wait to see 
her yeah. overcome that. Um, see people look dumb after they question her and just the growth. So I'm just here for Miami. We're here for Gertie, team Gertie. Uh, Love her. Uh, I do think it's Adriana just has this weird obsession with Alexia and it's just like weird. So that's just the only thing. It's like, I do like, the things that she does bring up. Cause of course, like stirring the pot, we love stirring the pot. That's why we are housewives fans, but it's like giving weird obsession. And it's still just like, girl, like you're, it's clear as day you're miserable and you got to at least spread that obsession elsewhere. Like give some to Larsa, please. But we'll get to her. Cause we left her, we left her plastic ass out for a reason. Lord <laughs> Jesus, let's uh, pray. But yeah, this season of, I, I mean, I love Miami. Like, like I, they always have just real, storyline so so they're always one of my favorites yeah and i can tell kiki is about to get lit towards the end of the season so i'm interested to get like more into kiki and see her fight and see yes. her argue so we'll see what kiki has to bring okay. yes what's next on your weekly grab uh i just want to shout out rap shit season two uh it is just one of, we love Issa ray we love Issa ray like the the show it's just so relatable on different levels so we're now seeing mia and shauna they're embarking on their first tour. Um, but, you know, they're just uh, uh, up and coming artists in this game. And you're really seeing them navigate the music industry while I guess trying to still find who they are as artists and stay true to who they are just personally. Uh, like they're on tour with Rain of Rain, which is basically like Iggy Azalea. And they're seeing how they're basically being played to being made to play like some type of mammies on stage so there's that aspect of it then they have chastity who is their lesbian pimp manager uh who is trying to so fine i'm catching up to the show but she's so her. fine yes. hey girl a, a bad girl cub i love yes. it she's so she's so cool because i did get to interview them months back but it never it never got to come out and then the actor strike happened um so we didn't get to have those interviews come out, but they're all dope. Like chat, uh, 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 Janelle, I think that's her real name. And I forget the other two. Well, Camille, Chameleon is the, is Mia. Um, and Shauna. I mean, Aida like, Osman. I do Aida follow Osman. her. Yes. So they're all like super, super, super dope in real life. Um, but you're seeing Chastity, her character, like, uh, try to fight for respect as a manager. And it's, it's, then you're still seeing, uh, Shauna with her sister soldier esque persona, just trying to advocate for stuff at, in spaces where it's just like you know not the not the time or the place, but it's a good show. And then at the same time, it's they're they're young. It's it's a lot of this is being played out through social media, so it's just very relatable. It's very modern, and it's very well written. So shout out to Issa. Shout out to uh, Sarita Singleton. And make sure you're checking out Rap Shit Season 2 because, you know, it's still new. It's, so it doesn't have that insecure fanfare around it. But I want more people to support it because it's a good show. Yeah, I'm catching up. I'm almost at Season 2, but I want to take my time because I like yeah. to learn the characters. But right. I really like the songs. Like, yes. come out. I was not always writing these songs, but I did ask. So I was like, how much are you living vicariously through these characters? Issa was like, oh, girl. Like, yes. Like, it's like, what if you could be a rap, like a rap star without yes. being a rap star? What? I would love Pretty it. Much. Pretty much. <laughs> uh, so you have anything else on your grab? No, just another quick shout out. Like you have, I just want to shout out um, Sutton's white pants. Um, if you've seen the last episode of um house has a yes, when she wore the pants and my baby really wanted to be like, humped on she, but it's like so i hate she she has a history of doing that and it's but you know what one this is why it's so good that lisa renna is gone because because lisa renna has gone we're now going to be able to see the flaws in everyone else it was hard to see the flaws in everyone else because lisa renna and the force five was that annoying and stick it together it's like annoying what but was their name? Was it the Fox Five or something? Fox like that? Force Five. Fox yes, Force yes, 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 yes. So Sutton has always been annoying to me, but it was I didn't really focus on it too much because I was like, I can't stand Lisa, I can't stand Erica, you know. So now we're seeing like Sutton is very childish in a lot of ways. To be like one of, if not the oldest, on the cast, it's like she purposely wore those pants because she wanted to get humped on, but when she didn't get selected. She got upset and threw a little drama fit and walked out again. It's like, y'all forgot this is Crystal's birthday. She made it all about her. 
And, um, but then try to act like she was just offended by how risque they were dancing. Like, girl, you had a magic mic show. How in fake is that magic mic? You wore pants and panties for a reason. Just okay. be honest. You wanted to be humped on. Don't act or prudish. And, and you should have been like Erica like this. Erica was like, Erica was like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yo, that was so funny. That's my new life mantra. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I'm going to just one day send you yes. a picture of my it's like the way, like, like, I'm like, why am I starting to like Erica? Like, how is that happening? Me too. I started to too. like Erica. It's getting on my nerves. I'm sorry. I'm team Dorit. What? Like, <sighs> yeah. So I'm just like really here for this season of uh, Beverly Hills. I'm liking this season of Miami. Um, so uh, we'll get into Salt Lake, but Salt Lake is like top tier. And I'm starting to not look forward to watching Potomac because it's just, I'm so tired of the mean girl colorism shit. It's getting played out. Mm -hmm. um, but before we close out the weekly grab, I did just want to circle back on a show you introduced to us last week called Black Cake. It is not a baking show. There is no. baking in the show. Yes, it does have a black cake in the show. At, like, almost every episode, you're going to probably see a black cake. I actually want to try black cake now. But I want to go find that's it. You did not tell me that Glenn Turman was in the show. You would have had oh, to I'm so I'm you sorry, y'all. So we have to go back Turman. to high school. You know I love me some glass. I forgot to tell you that your boyfriend. That is my dash full pass. Was I forgot y'all? Since I have known this girl almost twenty five plus years, there's been one man who will set her soul on fire no matter how old he is. Glenn, Glenn I forgot to tell you he was the lawyer. You would have watched it sooner. I would have watched it sooner. What, what happened when you saw him on last screen? Week? What happened when you saw him? You jumped like. I said, he still got it. Ooh. That's Ooh, my daddy. <laughs> Such a good actor. Every scene he's in, it's so compelling. He steals the screen. But anyways, you're right. It's such a good show. Um, I can't believe Covey with all those damn secrets that she has. I'm going to do a separate rant on it because it's like, I, we, I don't even, I, I could talk for like the next 30 minutes about this show. But I do just want to say, to all the parents out there, don't leave your kids in the dark and, and wait and, and have forced them to wait until your death for them to learn the truth because your history is our history. It's our identity. And we all we don't know where we're going unless we know where we came from. Mm -hmm. So share and, and take your time with it, right? There's you, you got your kids, you know, wait till as they're getting older, but share, divulge. Um, I can understand the trauma that she was facing from her life experiences as to why she was reluctant to share, but that just doesn't excuse the degree of secrets that she kept from her children. It's just like, how can someone process that on top of having to process the, the, the passing of their parent? It's just like very selfish in my opinion, extremely selfish, but, um, other than that amazing show though, such a great yes, show. Yes. It's such a good show. And if it's one it's thing. Y'all need to watch. That's yeah. not scary or reality TV. Yes. A good, I'm I'm calling it Black is Us because it is very much a It's like this is us. But, but it just doesn't make you cry every episode. You know, I don't do the crying. I that is the episode title. Black is Us. Black is Us. Black is Us. You don't us. cry like this is us because I've seen all six seasons, every episode. So yeah. it's not as, but it, it does hit your heart and you do kind of realize. But it's without making you cry because there's no reason. But you know what it was with This Is Us? It's like, I think it was the lingering, knowing that the father was going to pass away type thing. Like it was always that. And so it was just like emotional every kind of episode. But this one, it's like, it kicks off. She dead. <laughs> she, she dead. Eleanor's dead. And now, Let's divulge it to Eleanor's life. So, you know, it's good. And then like each episode takes you into like the different, the children and stuff. So it's good. Like I, I'm here for wherever it's going to take us. And let's watch it y'all so they can get a season two. Cause now that the writing strike is over, we got to yes. get back into our shows because they will yes. cancel them. They will yes. cancel yes. them. Yes, especially if it's black. Cause they don't huh. understand. They'll be like, well, Sorry we, gave, that we gave you a chance. Said it. We gave she you said. a chance. <laughs> Hey, only two people watched Jarosta and Today. Yeah, Jarosta and Today were those those two black girls were the only two that watched. So we gotta hey, we gotta move on. Watch it, watch it, guys. Black cake on Hulu. Please. <laughs> All right, so let's get into our piss poor performance. Now you can visualize our sound effects. Um, <laughs> mine's is to shake. 
from the house of villains you are an asshole you are not made for tv i think that there's a level of respect he doesn't have for women that is very evident i think it's different from being like the villain other men that are villains on the show they're not like outwardly disrespectful to women i can tell that he genuinely thinks women are beneath him um i loved watching his ass lose how he lost especially to fucking amarosa because he really thought f you you're toast you're toast that's what you get (laughs) it was so crazy he's like really like bro like you really it's like like it's like wow we already knew you were a douche from freaking love is blind but the fact that he thought he wanted, that's what he was doing to only the women, by the way. It was just like, what is wrong with you? Like something Listen. seriously, seriously wrong with you. And then he's and like, whatever. Now I can show my true colors. They stink. And then Corinne is flirting with Johnny Bananas all season. She said she finds him attractive. She wants to rub his feet. Why is that thirsty? Because nobody rubbing rub your ugly ass toes. Because nobody wants to give you attention. Because nobody wants to be flirting with you. She's not thirsty. That's what she wants to do. And he's not saying she's, he's inviting it. So why would you come one and make yourself look worse? Um, Kind of mini read for Amarosa only because, okay. Yeah, I know you're playing she- the game. No, you yeah, didn't. I, right. If she would, why did you call those women into the room yeah, yeah. to say that, knowing you weren't going to do that? You shouldn't have had yeah. that conversation. You didn't have to have the conversation. Nobody asked you to have the conversation. Like, that was shady. I was here for, well, I'm here for both weeks of her getting read to Phil by uh, to, to Nisha. Tanisha. Tanisha did the Cardi B lyric. Because when I did that junket, I mean, Amarosa was by herself. None of them, they were, nobody was ro- rocking with Amarosa. Like, Tanisha was like, no. And I, and I was like, I see why, I see why. But at the same time, like, this is who Amarosa is. This is who she is always has been. And that's what got her into the white house. She is very strategic. She's, mm-hmm. she's very smart. Um, and she's just focused on the game. Like she's not trying to be your friend. She's married, happily married. She got kids. She don't care. She's there to just kind of do the job and shake it up. And whether you like her or not, it's like she's she is so far we're seeing week after week she's playing the game how the game's mm-hmm. Going. Mm-hmm. yeah that was shady that was a snaky snake move but snaky snake but she's still not off his for it's hey, shake why is bobby lights my favorite though he is my first of all i like bobby lights outside of love and hip-hop i was yeah, like I, yes outside maybe of he and needs to kind of like very graduate likeable. like yes. a, um who is another who I, not coming to mind but he needs to use that yeah. Because he's really good on TV. He's really good. Like, he's, he's really television. Good. Like, he's it. Like, he's totally Like, good. I really like him. So let's get him on Bravo. Rooting for, root for Bobby Lights. Literally rooting yes. root for Bobby Lights. Um, <laughs> who's so your piss for? for? Okay, so we're going to revisit Real, Real Housewives of Miami. Because y'all noticed who we left out. And so my piss poor is going to Larsa Botox Filler Pippin. Okay? Thirsty. <laughs> you self-absorbed wannabe teenager trapped in a 50 year old body cradle rocking tired ass home you are so every type of fake that gertie said you were you self-absorbed bitch no one you like it, it was i love how production is not saving your ugly face at all this season you sat down with gertie after she opened up and told you that she had breast cancer and literally six hours later, when you are going to go have an unnecessary ass party for your 20, a, a, a boy that is 20 years younger than you, that is the son of your ex-husband's teammate that he doesn't like. Weird. You go and tell two random ass friends, then wait till the rest of the cast shows up. And tell them Gertie's business that she told you in confidence. And she said she told you in confidence. Then you're on social media like, I was telling them so we could rally around her. Shut up, you fake, just slore. Nobody you asked are, you for that. No one asked you for that. It, every day, every it's every episode this season, we are seeing why the Kardashians distance themselves from your irrelevant ass. And mm. let's hope. Let's hope that you actually bring something to the table that producers don't decide is worth replacing with Kiki, who might, who I think might be worthy of taking your spot. Because yeah. girl, go back to where you came. Go back to being absent. You changed. Not only did you change your face, you changed your entire voice 
listen to season one Larsa and listen to these reboot seasons Larsa. Her voice is different. It doesn't make any sense. You are trying to present yourself as a 25 year old, the same age as your children, you old bitch. And you're so wrapped into yourself. You're making Gertie's reveal, her breast cancer reveal about yourself. You deserve every, like all the shade that's going to come your way, honey. Like you have now become the most hated housewife. Like I'm watching all the comments. People used to be rooting for you. I never, you know, I didn't mind you being around, but now I think everybody is rooting for your demise. And it's very, very much deserved. I cannot, like, there's very few people that I actually really like literally can't stand. Giselle Bryant. And Larsa Pippen, I cannot stand them. Like literally can't stand them. I would read you the filth for fun if I ever met you in person. One uh, thing I noticed is that when you put me on a Miami and I started from the beginning, Larsa from season one to their reboot, I was like, that's not the same person. That's not the same person. There's no that's way, right? The person. But then I hate when people try to control how I handle what I am hearing. And when Gertie sat down with her, and she told her, don't cry. Don't tell me what to do with my emotions. You cannot control how I react to what we're talking about. Okay. If it makes me want to cry, I'm going to cry just because you're an evil cohort. Well, you person. can't cry because your face can't move. Or then when Gertie was explaining her story of like coming to the country and speaking different. And she's like, Larsa's like, I speak for fast. She's like, girl, shut up. Like, no, I'm talking about coming here as an immigrant. Again, stop talking and making it about yourself. And it it really explains why her thirsty ass has always has over the years since her divorce only dated like other athletes my, and future. Like it's like it's all about the clout for her. It's all like she's so going after this image. And it's like it's hilarious because it's like you look at season one, Larsa. So it was like, damn, you really trying to make up for something. Like you literally felt like a loser all those years with your old face and your saggy nose. And so you changed your whole image to look like Kylie Jenner with uh, old Kim's old body because now they don't have those BBLs anymore. So now you really look stupid. BBLs are out. Kim showed you that. Yeah. So yeah. now you, you're walking around with this 2018 body. Your face can't move. Very cakey. I don't know if it's, you look at the light. Like yes, when they were at the gym, I was like. Ooh. And you got a simp ass boyfriend who's probably only dating you to spite his father because he's the second son i don't know there's some probably yeah. some child syndrome there but for him to be dating you it's not you know the father michael jordan that said no but he said no to your relationship so and, yeah i'm very surprised how um much he's on the show i would have only been a few episodes but i would have thought he wouldn't have been i feel like right. like a robin and one i feel like there's women on the, in this franchise who like look you need this check you want this money? Sit down and do what I say. And it seems very like forced. So I just, mm, yeah. no, no. Yeah. They can both go home. But anyways, yeah. <laughs> Larsa, shake. Okay. She said it, not me. <laughs> now let's go into who we're rooting for. Let's go into some positive vibes. You always got to end on a good note. Right. And uh, speaking of the challenge, I am rooting for my girl, Big T, my Nigerian queen on the newest season of the challenge. She took a couple of years off. So not only is she a certified chef now, so she went to cooking school and she got that, but she came out. She oh, recognized that she likes women. She was dating a woman and it didn't work out, but she was like, there's no love lost. I wish her the best of luck. They had a whole party for her and they sung happy be you happy be you instead of happy birthday <laughs> yeah yes. so they got her a cute cake with a rainbow and you could tell there's like a chip that lifted off her shoulder but she also talked about her upbringing she's nigerian right. she grew up in london i don't think at the time her parents knew so i think them watching the most recent episode is when they're gonna find out so i'm just hoping it went well big t like live your truth i always say you cannot be miserable you have one life to live you gotta be happy and if i don't choose and you sleep next to every night please don't try to tell me who i should sleep next to every night so i love you big t come to america i'll take you to pride in new york um, and I'm just proud. Everybody just live yeah. your truth. 
be who you are. Yes. All right. So yes, I'm rooting for you, sis. Who's your yes? Come on, back closet girl. Yes. <laughs> um. So actually, my yes, it is a tentative yes. I'm giving it to Monica Fowler, Dana Johnson, Smith, Garcia, Rodriguez of Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. <laughs> Listen, she done wrapped up the grill so far in the right way. Ooh. And I'm here for it. Okay. I was really here for how she was gathering Lisa Barlow up at a Whitney sound bath event. It was just everything because old people need this. So go ahead and listen. Yeah. <laughs> oh, people need this. Yo, because first of all, we all know how uh, self-absorbed Lisa Barlow is, right? So it's like, she's like mad at Angie K for no reason. It's very childish. And I just like that um, Monica is that kind of petty to just stoop to her level and take it there. And I just, I'm here for it. Now, we have since seen that no one on the cast rocks with Monica. So we're going to find out throughout the season what the hell happened. We're finding out right now about a lawsuit mm -hmm. between her and um, Heather Gay. But overall, I am still, I'm here for what Monica's bringing to Salt Lake City. So I really like her and I really want her to make a friend because when you don't have any friends, i.e. Lisa Renna, okay, right, my they ice you out. And so... When they ice you out, it's just kind of like, what happens when they ice you out and you have nobody to talk to, you have nobody to be around. So I really hope that they kind of get this together and she kind of makes a comeback. I don't know what it is, but I really want to have a friend because I can honestly do without Mary Cosby. If you give oh, yeah, me more she, Monica, because yeah, Mary I mean, kind of looks annoyed. I think yeah. they tried it because they lost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, let's I I see I why Mary. they brought back Mary Cosby and it was like a tester. But yeah, from here, it's like, we don't, yeah, we don't, I don't think we need her anymore. Um, but no, I'm here for Monica. I don't care. Team Monica Me right too. now until we find out whatever. We can even tell like she's snobby, you know, because even if she was being a little rude when Lisa was singing uh, the Christmas song. But I don't know. Right now I'm here for it because at the same time, we can see where it's rooted from. Her mother's a hot mess, so... It probably would be hard her for her. Her mother to took her car and she's a single mom. Like it's OD. Her mom is. <laughs> wait, wait, so wait, because I kind of missed this. So did she get a divorce because she cheated on her, her husband with his family member or something? She slept with her husband's sister's husband, her brother-in-law. They had an affair and she confided in her priest about the affair and she thought it was safe because she was Mormon or practicing Mormon. The priest dropped the bomb, told the family, hey, Monica's sleeping with the husband. So then she divorced her husband. He forgave her. They got back together and he couldn't get over the trust. And so they excommunicated her. They said she's a ho. So it was just drama. But when you see where she comes from, Wait, that's freaking low. Yeah, she slept with the 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 brother in law Your was very brother. like gullible. I mean, you know, she, he oh my he was God. a he was predatory on her, like seeing the weaknesses and kind of fed into it. And they they had an affair for a couple months, Ooh. and she felt so bad that she confided in her priest, and her priest was like, "No, this is against the Mormon way," and he told. Ooh, that yeah. is um t child but that is messy that's low that is and that's why we gotta keep her please somebody talk to monica because i don't want her. i don't want to keep no, her. no no we need monica we're not getting rid of monica unless she does some gents shawl we keep it monica yeah yeah okay all right so we are here with the one and only miss Brittany allen two-time uh uh kind of like finalists semi-finalists on your first season but on Project Runway, on Bravo. You've been a fan favorite since you first appeared in season 18. You came back uh, for Project Runway All-Stars that just yep. finished airing. And you are just still crushing the game. So how are you? <laughs> I'm tired. Uh, I need like, I would say a nap, but let's face it. I need like a whole month of just, you know, a snooze fest. But yeah, honestly, I mean, I, I told a friend yesterday, they were like, are you getting some, you know, relaxation time? Are you getting time off finally? And I'm like, I don't know if I really like time off because then I start to get my head and then I'm thinking I'm not doing enough. And so 
even if it's, you know, the collab with Peloton or even going through with the show and showing my new aesthetic and doing my own thing, like it really wouldn't be time off. I'm thinking creatively and, and having a little bit more like creative freedom when I, when I do have a little bit of free time yeah. that I'm keeping it like fresh. And so I'm tired, but, um, I'm very, very fulfilled and my okay. heart is full. And I love what I do. And so I can't complain. And you look great. <laughs> yeah. Thanks girl. I put makeup on just for you. Ah, uh, no, you didn't have it's to because you you have you have a nice natural beat. <laughs> you didn't have to put on the makeup. <laughs> um, but I can see that life post project runway. You are you are very booked and busy. Um, I saw you put it on for your city of Austin at Austin Fashion Week, which is really dope to see. Um, just before we get into like you, you know life where you're at, just tell us what is life like now after two time appearance on Project Runway. I mean, there's obviously like double the eyes on you. So it's very, um, there's a lot of pressure. And for somebody that is very sensitive and very defensive of her work, um, you know, it's just, it's just really hard because I mean, I went into this last time, this, this all stars, just doing exactly what I didn't do the first time. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to mind my business. I am here to create. Um, and I'm just going to, focus solely on doing the thing that I didn't get to do the first time, which was showing the finale. So now that I've gotten to do that, it was kind of like a really good cherry on top. And I do feel like that there was like a full circle closure to that, but there's a lot of pressure to just like keep going after you competed on the show and you've done so well. Um, so I'm, I'm juggling with that um, creatively a bit, but I do feel like I'm on the right path. It mm -hmm. definitely kind of set that that fork in the road of I'm definitely taking the right direction uh, with the brand. And so there's that validity to that, which I'm very grateful for. And so what was it like going back, going back to Project Runway after it wasn't even that long of a gap since you had first. Appeared? No. Yeah. I mean, I guess I was one of the noobs because I was the only one from season 18, which was, that was very surprising to me. Um, but with the, there was really only one season between me and all stars which was season 19 so it was pretty fresh but I do think that that played in my advantage because I had just gotten out of the routine of okay what does making a look in eight hours look like and just the pressures that's coming from like all different angles so I think that I benefited from that but honestly I walked into that workroom the very first day and I'm like what have I done like <laughs> what am I doing back here this is crazy but you know we're adrenaline junkies so for we had sure. to. so let's talk you know. about a little bit about that transition you mentioned it earlier you kind of had to figure out your aesthetic aesthetic between season 18 and all-stars 20 what made you kind of like finalize that's it I'm going into sportswear and kind of give us some insight about that mindset. What made you finally decide this is your lane? Totally. Um, it's kind of just happened, which I mean, is great that I've figured it out and I found that passion, you know, the raw way. Um, I, I've always been like a very feminine designer, which you could see on like season 18. And I really just love like little details that make a look really unique and just give it something different than what you could already get in the market so the feminine kind of cool girl feel to clothes is something that's always been like very dear to my heart and I love ready to wear um but I mean it wasn't until like the pandemic that you know people were having to work out at home had to like they didn't really have a choice um and they were starving for like exciting clothes to wear while they're working out at home because <laughs> they can't go anywhere and so I'm thinking like it was literally like a light bulb. I mean, how can I contribute to this like market of giving people something exciting and, and giving them inspiration through clothing, which is always what I've wanted to do. And so I started working with um, one of the Peloton instructors, Jess King. And I was like, let me do some looks for you. Like, let me just, let's pop off on some customs I mean and then it turns out I was really good at it <laughs> and I, was, yeah, I avoided knits and stretch for like the longest time and you know spandex has like that stigma of being you know the um like the ugly sister of the group 
but I mean, making it like making it cute and making it comfortable, but then bringing it into like a fashionable place. I was like, nobody else is really doing this. And so how can I do that? And I mean, little did I know that was it. (laughs) Yeah. What I love, it's like if Posh Spice and Sporty Spice had a workout line. That's what I love. It's sexy, but it's comfortable. And speaking of Peloton, I'm so excited. I know we saw that you are collaborating them. So first of all, congratulations. That's a very big deal. What can you share about the collaboration? Maybe some inspiration and what's to come, if you can share when it's coming out. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I've been working with Peloton for, I guess, right before the pandemic. Um, And... I just really love like the people go to these instructors and these individuals, whether it's on or off the bike for inspiration and motivation, just to like get up and move their bodies for like 10 minutes. And so, you know, I've, I've I've been a Peloton member since 2017 and I've always dreamed of like, you know, I'm on, I'm on the bike setting the scene, like on the bike sweating. And I'm just thinking like, these people are rock stars and I would love to like get my clothes on them So just reaching out and getting a response back was like wild. Um, And so this is, it's like a full circle moment that I could, they, you know, they called me and they were like, Hey, we really should do an apparel collab. And I'm like, what took you so long? Um, Number one and number two, absolutely. Yes. It was very effortless. Like there really wasn't any kind of like um, hurdles that we had to get over. It was just kind of, they let me really kind of like dig deep into like this creative space and the inspiration kind of came from being in a creative space like having the pressures of being a designer and having the restraints and so I played with like geometric shapes like the checkered but then also having that very organic flow of colors so that was where the print came in Um, it's just a juxtaposition on like how it essentially is to be an artist like in our industry today but I wanted to make it really beautiful and show that like, you know, you can come out of the other end looking incredible. Um, and so that was kind of like where I was inspired with that. But like I said, it was, it was absolutely like an effortless collab and everybody seems to love it. I know that it's kind of out there, but honestly, if I'm just creating things that are already on the shelves somewhere else, then what's the point? Yeah, no, you deserve, you deserve, it looks great. It's it, like you said, it was a seamless transition from even like closing out all stars and, you know, every, like you said, all eyes are on all of you guys, like who's doing what. And so bam, a collab with Peloton with you, like really representing yourself in this like athleisure sportswear space. Yeah. All stars. It was just, but like, let's get back Thank into you. project runway. <laughs> Because you appeared on All Stars, so you were really competing against the best against the best, the best of the best, and you made it to top three, girl. Like mm-hmm. first of all, let's just clap it up. Top three. I mean, that was a year ago, and I still can't believe it. So, like, oh, I keep forgetting it's such a lag. So you guys film it, and then you guys like edit it and stuff. So it was about a year ago. Actually, it was uh, a year in like two days. Uh, she knows exactly yeah, the date. It's fresh. Date. I'm like, so take fresh. us through. We already know you've been watching the show like us. Who are some of your favorite designers of all time on Project all Runway? Time. And then just in general, like fashion designers of all time. Who do you love? Ooh, of all time. Okay, so we'll start with the Project Runway because you know I'm a big fan of the show ever since the beginning. Um, and it's really hard for me to like now look at like, all the seasons together and not pick out all like my all-star <laughs> like you know people that I competed against but obviously I was a really big of big fan of Fabio um because he was just like a reoccurring character and I just absolutely fell in love with him and he actually he did my audition twice for Project Runway and so he, it was like this wild moment walking in and being like oh my god you're here this there's literally no way <laughs> Um, and I really loved Rami, of course, Christian changed the whole, just, I felt like he really kind of shifted the industry at the time. Cause it was like, oh, there was the stigma around project runway and designers. And it's like, no, you can win it and, or do really well and still have a very successful brand. So I loved Christian. Um, I really enjoyed Aaron because I loved, I love color. 
Um, <laughs> let's see. There's so many that honestly I could go through, but those were Victor Luna was a yeah. really, really big person for me. Um, but just designers in general. Yes. I did my internship with Betsy Johnson. So I love oh, Betsy. Well, love her. Yes. I know it's a given. You're like, come on, give us something. Yeah. Else. Like, right. Like, <laughs> it just I know. Makes, it, that makes perfect sense. I know. And then, you know, actually during the unconventional materials runway, I had on an Alice and Olivia dress with the Brandon Maxwell pink sweater. And I'm like, how are these two designers? Like, I didn't know that she was going to be the guest judge. I did not plan that. That was absolutely wild. But I love Stacey Binday. Like, I love the way that she works with like prints and color. Mm-hmm. And um, Virgil was a huge inspiration to me. Rest in peace. Um, so I think that those were like the big ones that I almost took all those like inspirations and I was like, where do I fit in and how can I make this like melting pot of just really beautiful fashion? Um, but in a, a usable, affordable way. That makes perfect sense. Cause when you name each of those designers, I see them in all of your styles. Yeah. Seamlessly. So going back to all stars, um, we, you know, the tension was thick. It started to get super, super thick. Um, I tea got, was hot. It, it, was, it was hot. Oh yeah, the black was hot. I've been hot. The black was hot. <laughs> the um, black was hot. I I understood some of the frustration. Um, I felt like Anna was the comedic relief in a lot of ways, but at the same time, she caught a lot of flack from the designers. Some in ways that I just was like, maybe they're kind of just taking out their frustrations on her. But what were your thoughts on you know? Because you didn't take part in any of that. But what were your thoughts overall on kind of the, do you feel like some of the criticism she was getting was warranted or do you think like it was a bit much? Um, I mean, yeah, you're right. I was sitting there like, just like my own business, my own business, do exactly what you didn't do the first time around. Um, but you know, Hannah is like, she's absolutely hysterical. And the thing that they like really try to like hammer into your brain is have a signature, have a signature, have that thing that like you look at it and you're like, oh, I know that's Anna or I know that's Brittany or I know that's Laurence. Like, it doesn't matter who you are. It should have that like really just thorough DNA fingerprint on your look. Like if it's walking down the runway and it's a blind runway, you want to like indicate, hey, this is me without, you know, writing it on the model's forehead. And so it was, it was actually kind of like tough to sit there and listen to it because she she was doing the thing that they have been telling us to do right and technically I mean yeah there was similarities between the two looks but essentially they weren't the same dress it was ruffles used in a different way um and so it's really hard because she was doing the thing that designers are supposed to do yeah so and I mean it's a competition so like if she's doing it and getting by with it yeah I mean people are only mad because they're not getting by with it and so she's like I'm gonna I'm gonna do my own thing I'm just gonna keep (laughs) she was like I would be convinced I was like oh no she's definitely going home like this is and there we go she made it through and I'm like I mean, bless her. That was probably I mean, she, my I, biggest jaw drop of the season. Yeah. <laughs> she, well, she admitted, she was like, I got my jewelry on because I thought I was going home. And so I think she was shocked, but you know, I mean, what they're looking for on the runway, I was just thinking like, oh, I just saw some really beautiful draped pieces that I'm actually surprised. Like I did not think that Fabio should have been on the bottom in the red challenge at all whatsoever, period, point blank. That was the biggest shocker in that challenge for me. But um you know, now looking back at it, it's like they were just really starving for something like different and funky. And even if it made them kind of cringe a little bit, there was emotion to it. And if, if Nina's indifferent about a look, you're in trouble because she wants some type of sparked intrigue into the look, whether she hates it or she loves it. At least there's something that's like, it's never, it's something I've never seen before. Yes. And so Anna delivered that. She did. She did. Um, who have you kept in touch with from season 20 and 18? Ooh, um, so Chelsea's still one of my best friends uh, from season 18. Love her so much. We haven't we actually haven't talked in like a couple weeks, which reminds me that I need to call her, but I keep up with her. She's got a new dog. 
Um, and then Fabio actually just left Austin a few days ago. I saw you guys take a picture together. Yes, Angel. So I uh, actually was not fully finished with my collection once he arrived uh, in the beginning of the week to show this last weekend. And I was like, I cannot believe that we have found ourselves here again where you're helping me sew this collection. <laughs> like, I'm like, I'm so sorry. I promise I'm a good friend. Yeah. Um, but no, we have we have a blast. So I love that. Speaking uh, of collections, sorry, go ahead. Um, so my favorite look of yours was seeing red, which is the one that you won. Let us know some of your favorite looks from your all-star season, or maybe one that you wish you could have edited. Like you saw it on TV and you're like, oh, I could have did that strap different. Or I should have changed oh, that yeah. color. <laughs> well, you know, every look that comes down, I'm like, oh, don't let other people see this. Like, you know, we're so critical. So we're like, we find something wrong with everything. But um, as triggering as it is, because it's when Fabio went home, was the underwear challenge. I mean, I was surprised I was safe, but that bralette was everything. I actually like recreated it. It took me a tenth of the time, the second time I created it, of course. Um, but I loved that look. Like I loved the bralette with all like the little strappy moments and the green with the bow. Um, really loved that one. If I could do something over, I think it would have been the, the 90s challenge because I am a 90s like child. I mean, poster. I actually really different. liked this look. I didn't think. Yeah. Loved I, it. I liked it. I didn't think it was one of the ones that, because I know your group didn't, it was a group. Um, yes. Your group didn't do the well. Curse of the group. Yes. But I liked your look. I thought, I was like, it screamed 90s to me. Yeah. I well, wanted you know those what's, pants. For sure. I, I mean, I, I want to remake Black. that jumpsuit and I keep, telling myself that I'm going to do it but one of the things in that brief was that we could not use denim because foreshadowing we were about to use denim so we couldn't right. use denim right right well if I could redo that look it would have been in that black Dickies denim where it like snatched her and it wasn't like faux leather and I wasn't just trying to make it work but in that fabric it would have been giving like Jinko's like eleganza, honey it would have been perfect <laughs> but you know um I'm you didn't think this one this was like my all-time favorite you know I like told you on Instagram I was just like girl like it was I like have that fabric your, your evolution as a designer was so evident anyone who saw you in season 18 and then here in season 20 it was just like what um you didn't name this one girl oh this no one. I do I did love that I I wanted to do like a cool sleeve to make it not just like a strapless cocktail dress but like the technique that went into that was holding like that was holding it up that was ah, keeping me alive because it was yeah. everything and I love it everything from your final your final collection I even saw when you just did Austin Fashion Week I was like yes because like I saw like some of those pieces but it was like girl like Work. I know they're about to go on sale because these are like my favorites so yes and your placement of each garment, I think that's so important on Project Runway. Yeah. Some designers don't know when to put what garment where, but yours really told a cohesive story of like, okay, I can see she's going out, she's going in. I kind of saw the dark, the lights, the colors. It was Yeah, amazing. I really wanted to take it from like, just it was a progression of everything. It was a progression of color, introducing that print into it, the complexity of it, but also like going from ready to wear to like, ready to wear luxury active wear which I'm sure threw people a lot for a loop because I don't really know that there's ever been like just an active wear collection and a finale in Project Runway uh -huh. but then taking it into like an active wear couture with Mimi like doing the kick I mean I was just like I could die right now and I'll be happy it was done. like thank you god for that um but yeah I just I I feel like the collection was really cohesive I'm really proud of it and honestly I say this and I'm sure a lot of people wouldn't believe me, but if you gave me the chance to go back and redo anything in that finale collection, knowing that I wouldn't win, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it. And that's why you're an artist. It's perfect. Yes. You stand by everything. Um, <laughs> yes, so I loved it. This is an interesting question. Let's say there's a Mount Rushmore. Give me four of your top celebrities that you would like to dress. Oh, <sighs> okay. Um, Oh my gosh. So I love Casey Musgraves. I love her style. Always wanted to dress her. Um, let's see. 
<sighs> um, Lupita. But, yeah, which I mean, I may not be her aesthetic, but I just think that she's absolutely divine and I want to dress her so bad. Um, and then a little bit more like my aesthetic is Sophie Hollyweld, which is she's one of the DJs of Sophie Tucker. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. And then you know what? I am dying just to get Elaine wearing something. Like I could see that. Under she's a she's yeah, like yeah, a cargo yeah. queen, and I'm like, let's yes. just put some pockets all she's over her and she, get it on. She, I know she's she's ready and waiting for some of your looks so she really is i just need to like mail it and not even give any contact don't even ask like, her this is Send for you it. sis no yeah this is all for you honey so our podcast is called we watch too much tv and with with the, us going with the theme of the show we would like to know what are some of your favorite shows or what are you currently watching mm. you know there's not much reality tv in there right now um but i am so obsessed with the morning show we just finished, I think we guessed we finished the finale just recently. Love the the morning show. And I am so ready. I'm on pins and needles for the last parts of Stranger Things. It's by yes. far my favorite show. Yes. I like horror. You're um, a scripted queen. You guys are besties. That's I thing. know. I just yeah. love it. I just love it. Like, yeah. take me to a place that I want to live in, you know? Because the yeah. reality stuff is like, oh, I'm living this the same yes. time y'all are. So I can't. I can't deal with the stress. Oh, are but... you watching the new Goosebumps? I did. I watched it. It was really good. Yes. It was still, cheesy, but in the best way. It's like, yeah, because it's like, it's for us. Like if you are yeah. original Goosebumps fan, you should only love this new one, which I feel like it's like a American horror story inspired version of Goosebumps. Yes. So it's like... Yes. I thought they did a really good job and they left us with a little cliffhanger. We won't give too much away, but. Yeah, no. I mean, it's still airing right now. So I think the finale episode is probably going to air this week or next week. Probably this week. Oh, don't, yeah. They don't want to go into Thanksgiving. Yeah. So, yeah, it's gotten good. I'm but enjoying it. It's for <laughs> no, us. no spoilers, no spoilers, no it's spoilers. For us horror, no spoilers. It's for us horror fans. I also, I just watched The Nun 2, the movie, The Nun 2. <gasps> I have not seen it. It's on HB, It's on HBO Max. Girl. So good. Yes. I've seen the first one. I need to see the second one. Yeah. And I was able to watch okay. it by myself, but of course I only watch horror movies by myself during the daytime. So yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. My husband yeah. hates horror films. So I've got to find some time when I'm by myself. You to gotta like squeeze. Yeah, I do it during the day because if I'm by myself, I can't at night because then I'm like gonna be scared. I know you're setting your alarm with deadbolts. Yeah. I'm like, nope, I'm not playing with this fire. So for our last question, just tell us what is next for Miss Brittany Allen. Ooh, um, well, right now I am, I just finished the collection. So launching, getting all that on the site where everybody can just, you know, bask in the newness of it all. People are dying for some of these like rhinestone pieces that are just bringing like spandex to an elevated space, which is hard to do. Um, so launching all of that and then getting ready for this whole cyber monday small business saturday weekend that's just going to be wild but i've got a couple things um that are protected by you know contract yeah. papers yeah. they're exciting <laughs> but there's we've got some some big things and i feel like it's all kind of spaced out to where i can kind of give you know people breather and create and then oh it's another big thing so i'm trying to get bravo to give me my own show with fabio or somebody but come on now we'll, we'll, we'll give them time it. we'll give them time it. We'll speak we'll that me. into existence. Um, Manifesting. I'm here for it all for you. You deserve. It's been so amazing watching your growth as a designer and really staying in touch. You're really down to earth. Um, we didn't mention it, but the way <laughs> the way we met was actually really funny. Because uh, oh. I was oh on. <laughs> yes. I used to work with After Buzz out here in LA and I was on the Project Runway panel and it was season 18. And I gave my opinion and honey, Brittany found me on social. <laughs> she I was like, I'm going to defend my work, honey. <laughs> okay. Defend it. And she was going, it like, it was just like, you know, so it was just like actually really funny. And then, yeah. And then there was like, and then you had a clap back and I was like, mm, okay, yeah, I like I, her a lot. <laughs> right. I clapped back at her in the next week's episode. Cause we put it in our next week's episode. We showed her tweet. And then, yeah. And then from there, it was like, touche. <laughs> oh, yeah. I messaged you and I was like, okay, no, this, yeah, we're, we're the same. And, and literally, we are, we've been cool ever since. Like, I'll send her a message. Great. She responds like she's not Hollywood. 
like super, <laughs> super, super dope. But I feel like other creative individuals can like, they can see that we're really passionate about the work and they're like, oh, okay. I see what you're doing. Like this is, if you're not going to stand by it, then. And, and I, and I got your passion. Like when you came at me, I was like, oh, okay. I get it, girl. (laughs) Um, so with it, are you able to go back again? Like for another all-stars in the future? Oh, Oh, well, I don't, I mean, Ooh, yeah. I don't know if they would ever invite me back, but not for any it. like other reason that it was just it's been so recent for me now but I don't know Fabio's had four seasons so we won't count anything out but, but as a, that's what I'm saying as a finalist are you able to get invited back yeah I think so okay I think so, so. I don't I don't know if I would do it though oh what about guest judge maybe on like a oh 100 yeah, I would love to see your wear challenge I would yeah, love to like, see you as a guest judge yeah, or or maybe Christian sidekick for like a mentor kind of yeah. walkthrough thing. I, 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 I would, would be love totally that episode on board. where they even invite back some designers to serve as mentors with each different whoever's for sure. that time, and you would be great for or that. client challenge. Oh, yes, so, yeah, have me as a client. Yes, I love Let's it. Go. Well, Brittany, we're rooting <laughs> for all things you do. Uh, we're here for the new collection. Check it out. It's what Brittany Allen. ATX. Yes, BrittanyAllen.atx, honey, because you know yes. she's from Austin, Texas. <laughs> you better you. Thank you so much for joining us. How can people find you? What's your IG, your Twitter? Like, give us your handles. We want to get all of our people to follow yeah, you. Yeah, I, I keep my handles pretty universal. It is BrittanyAllen.atx. The website is shopbrittanyallen.com. Um, but, you know, we've got some traction that if you just Googled Shop Brittany Allen or Brittany Allen fashion, it, it usually pops up. But everything shoppable. Um, we're adding more and more every other week. And so, yeah, it's, it's easy to find me. Um, Brittany is spelled the A and Y way, most basic, but Hey, you know, easy to find. All right, Brittany, enjoy your day and happy holidays. Thank All right. So thanks much. for having me. Bye. Bye. All right. And on that note, let's get into our positivity. <laughs> What you got, best friend? Small baby steps each day add up to huge, giant leaps over time. So please keep going. Do not give up. And that is from the Google search, positive quotes. (laughs) Okay. Mine is from Pinterest, uh, positive quotes. It's just a little affirmation. Look at you out here making it figuring things out as you go, pushing through fear, pushing through anxiety, learning from your mistakes. It's not easy. It's not always fun. It doesn't always feel like you're making progress, but you're doing it. Mm. And on that note- Positive, I love that. Yes. On that note, what's our slogan, best friend? Love, abundance. And good hair bundles, especially for the holidays coming up. I have any in right now, but I will. I typically do. Get that little ponytail, bestie. Get it swinging for the turkeys. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. And on that note, we're out of here. Bye. Enjoy your holiday season. Okay, happy turkey day. Bye. Bye. <laughs>